Welcome to the Building Materials Sales and Marketing Podcast, presented by Mark Mitchell, a sales and marketing consultant who specializes in helping building materials companies overcome difficult sales problems. Mark is the author of the book, Building Materials Channel Marketing, and a frequent speaker at industry events. Hello, this is Mark Mitchell from Wizard Strategy. Today, I want to talk about customer perceptions and understanding. I recently updated my website and took a little bit of my own advice. In my case, I was not making it clear to visitors to my website what I do and how it would benefit them if I worked with their company. I see many building material companies that I go to their, for example, homepage, and I do not know what they make. They'll use terms like innovation since 1925, different terms that do nothing to tell me, what do you make? And I found myself as uh, as being too close to my own situation, as I find we all are, and building material companies are. So we make assumptions. Of course, people know what I do, what product I'm trying to sell, who my company is. Of course, they, they know that. So I don't have to spell it out and be clear to them. So many building material companies and myself, they expect that the customer can connect the dots because it's so obvious to them that they assume, well, I don't need to say I make bathtubs. I don't need to say I make fiberglass bathtubs for builders of new homes. I don't need to spell that out. But yes, you do. Too many companies, and and I was guilty of this myself, are not starting out by making it real easy to tell what is it that you sell and do and why should I be of interest. You have to work so hard. In in my case, I was sharing so much information, trying to cover all the bases, that uh, while I have a lot of website traffic, people were getting lost within all of the things I was trying to share with them. It's very hard for all of us to prioritize what should be the most important, the second most important, the third most important. We tend to have a laundry list of 12 things we want to share. And this is whether you are a salesperson or a marketing person. So the salesperson, I'm in my mind envisioning you're in front of the customer and you you have 12 things you can't wait to show them or tell them about. It's almost like you are in a Middle Eastern bazaar with all these bright, shiny objects hanging. And if I just keep putting different ones in front of you, eventually one of them, I will watch your eyes light up and then I I know what to sell. That's a very ineffective way of selling uh, in today's world. But I still see many people do that when I go along with them and watch, observe how they try to sell their product to an architect, a builder, a contractor, or whoever. The same can be said of the marketing for many building material companies, whether it is their website, their trade show booth, they all are not very clear. It's almost like, let's just keep putting things up there. Hopefully, in the case of a a website or trade show booth, you don't get immediate feedback the way you do in a sales call that one of these will will ring out to them. The other problem I find with marketing is a resistance to positioning yourself or to focusing on the, the best type of customer. There are too many building material companies who assume I make windows. Every building has windows. Therefore, every customer that has anything to do with a building is potentially a prospect for mine, as opposed to saying, we make replacement windows, we make vinyl replacement windows, or we make energy efficient windows for use in commercial buildings, or we make 
high-end windows for use in custom homes. People are afraid to put themselves in a box as if they're going to lose a sale when it comes to marketing. And sometimes sales. That also sometimes wants to be that broad. But the more focused you are, the the better you're going to do. As if there are a hundred good prospects for you and you're trying to reach, a, you think if you broaden it out and there's a thousand prospects, the 100 who are most likely to really want to be interested in your product that you're a great fit for, you're going to get a much lower level of response from the people most likely to buy. So the first thing I invite you to do is I learned this from a story brand workshop that I went to. That is grab somebody that knows nothing about your product, nothing about literally building materials and have them look at your website on a laptop and three seconds later, close the laptop down and ask them to tell you about what they saw. Can they tell you what product you're selling? Can they tell you who you sell it to? Can they tell you anything unique about your company or your products? Too often, there'll be words like, well, it's an innovative company, but I'm not sure what they make. Or they've been in business since 1925, but I'm not sure what they make. Or there's some term here about save energy, but I'm not sure how or if it's a way of saving energy that I should be interested in. So when you're thinking about particularly your marketing messages, don't make that mistake. Go ahead and get uh, an outsider to tell you. And no, it doesn't matter that they're not an architect, they're not an, a builder, an expert in building materials. The more you can literally make it clear to, if you will, the man on the street, <laughs> the easier you're actually making it for the architect, the builder, the contractor, or other customers that you may come into. In a similar situation, the same thing happens when I observe salespeople. Salespeople will frequently assume, it amazes me, assume that the they're sitting across from an architect, they're sitting across from a builder or a contractor, that the customer knows what it is that they're selling and the customer can connect the dots as to why they should be interested. And I watch the customer struggling <laughs> To put things, I always call it in context, like, why are you here? Why do you think I should be interested in your product? Get to the point. If the only point you have is, we'll offer you a better price, then I don't like that point, but go ahead and make that point. If your point is something about your product lasts longer that maybe has benefit to the end user but doesn't have benefit to the architect or builder, then go ahead and make that one, even though that is that is wrong. But make it clear, what am I trying to show you to convince you to use and why should you be interested? And as you're going through your sales calls, gauge the reaction that you're getting. If you're getting the person is curious and wants to spend more time and ask good questions, you're on the right path. If you are not, then you need to step back and figure out just exactly what is it. I was with a client recently making a call on a panelized or offsite builder. And we were trying to show them the client's product, which offered many benefits that we thought would be appealing to them. One that we did not think about was the reduced weight of the product. And when the prospect, the, the panelized builder sitting across the table from us, you could see his eyes lit up when we said weight. And he played back to us. If I have, um, I'm not an expert in shipping, but I think he said that we can put 45,000 pounds of product on a flatbed trailer. And so if you could save us this much weight, that my, my rough calculations means we could put three more panels. 
And instead of having four semi loads to deliver a building, we could do it in three. And that was the real magic bullet. That was all the other benefits of this product were things that now to him were icing on the cake. They're nice to have, but they weren't a strong enough reason for him to seriously consider making a change. And so you want to let the customer define what the need is within that as you're going through. Now, as my client goes forward and calls on additional panelized offsite builders, they know to lead with the story about weight and then to fill in with the, with the other properties of their product. Another area where I find that salespeople and marketing people can make a mistake is by making assumptions about what Not only as I just talked about the customer knows about you, okay, uh, that that they know that you make bathtubs, that they are fiberglass, that they are good for residential and maybe multifamily construction where maybe you're trying to save money, that you want to be clear they know that. (laughs) And then the next is to find out, you know, what is their opinion about, we'll say, Fiberglass bathtubs. What is their opinion about your company? And not enough marketing people understand that. They make an assumption, well, that we're a great company with a great product. And that's, of course, what the customer thinks. And that may not be what the customer thinks. Maybe the customer had problems with fiberglass tubs in the past and they are or they've heard somewhere about problems. And so they're not necessarily going to bring that up. Maybe your company had some problems in the past or they had an experience that you were difficult to deal with. Or you have a reputation that you may disagree with, but yet it's out there. So you you really also want to spend some time just understanding How does your customer view your product category in general? Like if I say to a multifamily builder, the word bathtubs, what comes to mind? Does the builder say just an unimportant have to have product or does, do they say a pain in the ass for some reason? Or do they say, an unnecessary expense, or do they say the right tub can really help me differentiate my properties and rent the apartments faster for more money? What what do they say? And it amazes me how many companies and uh, so I'm going to say marketing departments and salespeople don't understand how the customer perceives your product. Where does it fit within things? And then the next is from from there is then to say, look and say, okay, so now you understand bathtubs. Now, if I say the material fiberglass, now what comes to mind? You're not trying to sell them yet on why fiberglass is so great. You're simply trying to have them in their words. So you have an understanding of what's the reputation of fiberglass bathtubs with most of your prospective customers. So now you can say they already feel it's the greatest thing in the world. You can say that they have these hesitation. You can say they wish that fiberglass was this. Now, the next thing you want to understand is if they weren't buying your product, what are they buying? Many times you you can look at an architectural specification. You can look at what a builder has been building and you know what they're using. But it's just good to, to validate or verify what are they using today? And, uh, and then have an understanding that's based on their thinking, not your assumption about why are they using that product. The easy one, of course, is that it costs less. But I see many, many customers who use things that cost more. And then there's usually incorrect assumptions about why are they spending more for this product. 
you can jump to a generality that, well, they do it because it has a brand name. And that may be part of it, but it usually is not the main reason that they are paying more for your competitor's product. The same thing is a lower price may not really be the reason that they are using your competitor's product who offers them what you perceive as a lower price. There can be many other hidden reasons why this is. So the more you understand all of these issues, both from a marketing standpoint and a sales standpoint, the more effective you will be in how you communicate with the customers, whether it is in a sales call or whether it is the what your trade show booth says or what your website says, or or any other of your marketing programs that you're doing. Stop making assumptions about our company is the best. We make a better product, so you should use it. That will not get you very far. The more you can speak directly to, understand, pardon me, the customer, where they are, what they think of your product, what they think of your company, When you start out there, then you can more effectively talk with them or communicate with them on something like a website. This also enables you to really zero your message in. As I started this this podcast uh, that speaks directly and explains to them, this is what we make (laughs) and it's perhaps made of this or give me just a little more detail about why you're different and then why your product is better. For example, in today's world, I believe that anybody that talks about subjects like our product or our company helps you reduce waste and inefficiency or improve productivity or save on labor, which doesn't mean labor necessarily costs more or less. It means that you probably have a shortage of labor, so using our product. Where I find most people are still focused on a feature, like our our product is one and three eighths. Our product is this R value. Our product is double paned. Our product is made of vinyl, fiber cement, whatever it is. So step back and look at why should somebody want to buy your product? How are you speaking to their needs to help them be more successful? So not enough companies do this either when I'm sitting with them on a ride along of a sales call or I'm looking at their marketing programs, their communications They're not making it clear what they make or why the customer should care. I look at these as I do many things, if you listen to me at all, as something that doesn't cost you any more money to do correctly. This isn't about you have to have a an expensive advertising program to grow your sales. This is simply take what you're already doing today. What do you say in a sales call? What does your marketing programs say? And the more you can simplify it and make it very clear, this is what we make. This is why we're different. And this is why you should be interested in it. The more successful you will be with the money that you're in resources like salespeople's time that you're investing today. So I hope that this uh, today it makes sense to you. And I think this is something that certainly as a salesperson, I know that you can improve your approach on your own, whatever your company tells you to do. Uh, as a marketing person, I would you know, recommend that you and that you're constantly looking at it that way, that if you're using outside agencies, you're pushing them because they can frequently come in with something that on the surface looks, oh my gosh, creative. But when you step back and you go, I I really don't know what we're saying here. It's really creative, but I'm not sure that I understand. We're making it easy for the customer to understand what we make. So don't assume that it's obvious. If you sell windows 
and you have a picture of a window and you think a lot of people know you make windows, you still should say the word windows. Make it clear, make it obvious about what you do. So I hope today uh, this has helped you to further get better results from what you're doing without spending more money, which many times is what I'm all about. So if you feel that uh, your company could benefit from some outside thinking that I could provide to make your sales and marketing more effective, please contact me and we'll have a phone call. Thank you for listening to this podcast from Mark Mitchell on building materials, sales and marketing. We hope he gave you some fresh perspectives on how to grow your sales and will listen to future episodes.